when in 1988 a whole classroom full of students went missing. No one could believe it. It had been a mystery that confused a nation as its children had gone missing for almost 40 years. That was until a woman stepped forward, Sophie Ryder, a woman who claimed to have been part of the class the day they disappeared, promised to tell the bone-chilling story of their disappearance. It was the year 1988, a clear ski Tuesday in April as Mr. Hemington had led his students into the woods for a geography lesson. The students were glad to go outside with the nice weather, and the headmaster allowed it. Suddenly, when the clock struck three, the manager became filled with doubts. Hemington and the kids had gone. Therefore, the school principal decided to contact the police, unwilling to simply hope that they had not just been delayed. He determined that safety must take precedence over regret. Two officers began to head to the site, but they found no one there. However, as minutes turned into hours, more officers and parents joined the search. They can't have vanished from the face of the earth. After hours of hard searching, they found a tape but the girl who wore it was nowhere near it. After weeks had passed, everyone had given up, fearing the worst. How could a group of 23 kids and a teacher simply vanish? Folk tales started to surface that you could hear crying children during the full moon. The fantasy of the town people had gone wild. After more than 35 years had passed, Sophie Ryder appeared on the streets unrecognizable to anyone. Her first steps into town were hesitant. Everything was much newer. She hesitantly asked, where is the police station inquired a passerby. Following directions, noticing stark changes. Buildings towered where trees once stood and streets buzzed with cars unfamiliar to her. Upon entering the police station, Sophie's outdated clothing and disheveled appearance draw curious and skeptical looks from officers and civilians alike. Despite the odd whispers and sideways glances, Sophie cleared her throat, ready to unravel the mystery that had consumed her and her classmates for decades. With every officer and civilian earshot now gathered around, Sophie begins to recount the events of that fateful day in 1988, each word drawing her audience deeper into the mystery. The room grew silent, hanging on to her every word as she prepared to reveal what had happened to her and her classmates. Officers scribble notes, their expressions a mix of curiosity and skepticism. Sophie's account of the day she disappeared fills the room, challenging the boundaries of belief. Sophie's insistence on her story meets a wall of disbelief, escalating the tension in the room. The police chief, drawn by the commotion, notices the significant tattered ribbon in Sophie's hand. The chief's interest clearly deepens, recognizing the ribbon as a key piece from the past. The chief's curiosity is peaked, hinting at a turning point. He reaches out, gently taking the ribbon from Sophie and turning it over in his hands. This piece of evidence, silent yet eloquent, bridges the gap between disbelief and possibility. The chief ushers Sophie into his office for a private discussion, pulling out a dusty file from the cabinet. In his office, the chief compares Sophie's ribbon with one found during the search, sensing a deep connection. The chief inquires about the fate of other survivors, taking a step towards uncovering the truth. Sophie reveals the loss of the professor and the survival of a few, painting a grim picture of their ordeal. The chief's expression turns somber as he processes the gravity of Sophie's account. His mind races with the implications of her story. Conversations shift towards planning a rescue operation. He stands, making calls and issuing orders, his resolve clear. The team around him is motivated by the possibility of reuniting the survivors with their families after so long. She explains the difficulty of the terrain and the narrow paths that led to their refuge. The chief takes notes. Maps are spread across the table and routes are debated with the input of rescue experts. The room buzzes with activity as calls are made and resources are gathered. The chief oversees the preparations. Every piece of gear from ropes to harnesses is checked and rechecked. The operation's complexity requires thorough planning and an understanding of the daunting task ahead. News of Sophie's miraculous return and her sensational story rapidly spreads, attracting a swarm of media attention. 
At the rescue site, Sophie points out the small, hidden entrance to the cave. The rescue team, equipped with specialized gear, begins the delicate task of expanding the passage without compromising safety. Every move is calculated, with experts carefully removing debris and reinforcing the structure. The rescue team and onlookers hold their breath, watching as the first rays of light penetrate the long, sealed cave. This moment, one by one, the survivors are brought to the surface, their emergence a testament to resilience and the success of the daring rescue. Each face, albeit weary, is alight with the joy of freedom. Cheers and tears mix in the air as families reunite, embracing loved ones they feared lost. With the rescue operation complete, Sophie begins to detail their harrowing experience. She describes the panic as the bear emerged and how their laughter turned to screams. Their teacher, thinking quickly, led them to a nearby cave seeking refuge from the looming threat. She recounts how their teacher led them into a cave for safety, only for it to collapse, sealing their fate underground. They were trapped. Sophie describes their adaptation to life beneath the surface. They found a river of water and natural plants, remarkable in their resilience. They managed to survive in the darkness. Community events are organized to celebrate their return, integrating them back into society with love and support. The experience is transformative, but also worked by the bonds within the community, showcasing the profound unity and shared compassion during times of adversity.